Hey guys, welcome back to the Recovery Lab. This is Mike. We're gonna do another session sitting for you guys today. I got a really special friend. This is a really good friend of mine. His name is Matt. Um, and Matt, why don't you just tell us a little bit about kind of what's been going on with you, and a little bit about like you know the last few weeks what we've been working on. Uh, about what 14 months now. I mm -hmm. had spinal fusion surgery L5 S1. Prior to that, did traditional physical therapy, did all sorts of exercise, massage, acupuncture. Nothing really worked. Uh, after the surgery, did PT, wasn't really getting better, and then I came in here, what, about October, November or so? Yeah, it was about in the fall. Yeah, yeah. we mm -hmm. did three months of kind of like breaking everything down, did some corrective exercise, kind of relearned how to brace and stabilize, did a lot of soft tissue work, especially hip flexors, kind of like uh, the erectors, and since then, I've been feeling great. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so, you know, uh, you know, obviously these, these uh, treatments kind of evolve over the course of working with somebody. So we really try not to assume anything. And Matt is also, you know, he was an avid Olympic lifter. I think that's important to note. Um, and also that he's an avid, uh, avid golfer. You know, so he his sport demand is kind of at that higher threshold. And, you know, with the spinal fusion and kind of losing a little bit of that segmental mobility in his lower back, We've had to really address his hip mobility and his upper back mobility to kind of get him the mobility that he needs to swing the club and also get in the weight room and kind of get stronger and build that ceiling back up so that his his demand of his sport is falling below uh, where his capa uh, his capacity is. So, you know, what we're going to do today, is he's actually a little bit flared up today. He played a couple rounds of golf over the weekend, um, and he's kind of feeling a little bit of that kind of like referral pain in his upper glutes, a little bit of SI joint pain. He's really feeling locked up, you know, through one specific side, right? That left side of yeah. the back and also his right kind of glute medius, right? So we call that, that you know, that, um, that inferior oblique sling, right? Where that QL, the inferior, on the internal oblique rather, I'm sorry. And the, uh, the opposite uh, abductors, right? That glute med kind of work as that synergistic team to kind of maintain that upright posture when we're in single leg stance. So. What we're going to see today is a little bit more of kind of what we do for some low back pain. Obviously, low back pain can be caused by a number of different things. But over the last few weeks, we've really kind of narrowed down that doing a lot of like some QL work, paraspinal work, some psoas work, and then working on his hips has really helped improve his symptoms and give him that, you know, neurological window that he can go out in the gym, work on some correctives and kind of really start balancing uh, his pelvic orientation back out. So stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy it and we'll get right to it. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna do with Matt today, and this has kind of been a staple for us kind of since the beginning. When I first met Matt, he really lacked hip internal rotation and extension. Those were two things that he really struggled with. And when he extended his hips, he kind of a lot of times got a lot of lumbar extension accessory movement with that. And that kind of irritated his facet joints. And I think was probably contributing to his pain on some level. So we're gonna start with some psoas release. Um, and honestly, I'm not going to spend as much time on his psoas today as I normally do. I think I, um, we're going to spend a little bit more time on his QLs. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of get into this, this deep hip flexor. And I'm just going to kind of range him into internal rotation, okay? So, you know, Matt, I've been doing this with Matt for a while. Um, you know, so he's really conditioned to it. This is not something where I'll kind of go for the throat on one session. But, you know, you got to build that trust and that depth up over time so that you can actually kind of access this tissue and open it up the way it needs to be opened up. So his hip internal rotation has improved drastically. I mean, you can see, you know, I barely worked on him and he's got that like 45, 50 degrees that we kind of want to see, especially for a sport like golf, which is, you know, a heavy rotational component. So, you know, it's come along a, a, a really long way. And, and obviously the credit kind of goes to Matt for really being diligent with his correctives. And, you know, at this point we're kind of in maintenance mode. You know what I mean? Like he'll get flare ups here and there after, you know, a lot of golf over the weekend and kind of hitting his workouts pretty hard. So, you know, if we can just kind of give him a little bit of that relief so that he can continue to progress in his training, then, then we're doing our job, okay? How's that feel, okay? Yeah, it's a little intense. It's definitely a little tight in here today. Yeah. I can feel that. You know, for Matt too, I kind of really like to use more of this passive uh, psoas technique where I kind of I kind of provide the movement for him, although he is pretty good at doing the movement part himself. It's just a, it's a little bit more comfortable, I think. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah. You know, when I'm doing the movement as opposed to when you do it. Um, so what I'm doing is kind of pinning that psoas down. Now I'm going to kind of work up and in right towards his spine. So like landmark wise, I'll take that, you know, that uh, towel out just so you guys can see. I'm gonna press straight down and then kind of up and in towards his lumbar spine. 
And then I'm gonna rotate him into internal rotation and extension, okay? And as you get into extension, it can kind of get a little bit uncomfortable. So again, communication with your client is key. You know, again, Matt's really coached up on this. this is something we've done a lot. Um, you know, so he's gonna, he does a really good job of relaxing, kind of just let me range his hip. A little bit tight there at the extension point, right? Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad though, actually, it's pretty good. Nice. Okay, so now I've, I've kind of worked on both uh, deep hip flexors from Matt. And now what we're going to do is kind of get into some of this QL and paraspinal work that we've been doing. I just kind of wanted to know, like you can see his incision site. Um, if you kind of get in, get in here and look at, take a look at this. When I first met Matt, he had a lot of scar tissue restriction. Okay, so remember, when you have an operation and that scar, you don't just, the skin doesn't just scar together, it scars down deep to that. So he had very poor fascial mobility through his thoracolumbar fascia, and that was causing a mobility restriction through his hips and, and, his, and his back. So kind of one of the first things we did was really mobilize this scar tissue and, and treat the scar, and that really improved our, our mobility as well. So now we're gonna kind of get into this QL work, okay? So this is kind of where it kind of hurts so good. And actually yeah. I can kind of feel right at this QL insertion, it's like really kind of crunchy and gritty. Yeah. Um, and what, you know, this kind of goes away after I work on him a little bit. And what this grittiness is, is it, it's indicating to me that this tissue has become hypoxic. So when you have in, inflammation settled into an area over a long period of time, that, that, that area kind of uses up all the metabolic oxygen and nutrients and it kind of gets like really gritty and crunchy like this. Um, so this is kind of where Graston really shines for creating blood flow, but you're gonna see I'm gonna kind of work him in to, uh, you know, this is a, again, a really passive technique. I'm just gonna kind of work into that QL, right? The orientation of that QL is kind of like attaches to this, this SI joint and, and to these floating ribs in here and to his rib cage in general. So we're gonna just kind of work in nice and slow. This is deeper work. Um, but again, Matt's really conditioned to this. So this has kind of been a, a, a really nice staple for us over the last few weeks. So if you have low back pain that's referring into like your upper glutes, check your QLs, you know, get a ball in here and kind of work through this and see if that kind of helps because you can use the treatment as a diagnostic tool. If you're working on something and it feels better, then, then guess what? You're probably, you know, on a trigger for yourself or something close to that trigger. How's that, Matt? Okay? Yeah. Feeling good? It's a normal crunch. Normal crunch, yeah, but we're gonna get rid of that today. Yeah. So I also like to coach my clients up, like breathe into the pressure. Breathe into that pressure, fill that diaphragm up. Atta boy, nice, nice. Awesome. So I kind of start him just, you know, in this prone position, just working on this. You can see the skin's getting a little bit red. I'm bringing some heat, some blood flow to this area. And now what I'm going to do is have him go into side lying and we're going to do some more of like these active kind of techniques. Okay. All right, Matt, go ahead and lay your side face that way. Right along. The next thing I'm going to do with Matt is kind of, I put him in this side lying position. I put a bolster under his head just so he's not crushing that downside shoulder. And we're going to work into an active release technique for this paraspinal, this QL, this like this inferior serratus posterior. Again, you're not working on any one individual muscle. There's a lot of stuff that lives in here. So we're going to kind of work on it all. What I'm going to do is he's actually going to bring his leg into flexion and almost give himself a knee hug as I work towards that origin point for that uh, for that QL, okay? So ready, Matt? We're gonna do about eight of those as a team. Go ahead. And he's exhaling as he's giving himself a pull. And you can see as he kind of gets to that knee, that really high knee flex position, he's kind of bringing his pelvis into a little bit, a bit of posterior tilt. And that's kind of that posterior tilt that's gonna really mobilize that QL. Remember, the QL is not attached to his femur, it's attached to his pelvis. So as he goes in a posterior tilt, we're really loading and lengthening that tissue. Go ahead, a couple more. How's that feel, okay? Nice, awesome. You know, pressure-wise, I'm in that moderate range here, maybe a little bit deeper. But again, he's really conditioned to this and we find that the deeper work for him is really effective. Awesome, a couple more. Great, last one. Okay, we've done this, that active release technique for his QL. This is kind of where I start getting into some Graston work. So you'll see I put him in a sideline position. I have his top leg in flexion to 90 degrees, so it's on the table. So what that's done is kind of tilted his pelvis towards him, but he's kind of in a neutral uh, upper back position. So that puts his QL on a little bit of length. What I'm gonna do is use this handlebar tool. And remember, you got these floating ribs in here. 
that are really sensitive to pressure. So just kind of imagine that rib orientation obviously is gonna be down in this angle. So I'm gonna kind of keep that angle consistent so that my instrument is parallel with those floating ribs so that I'm not putting direct pressure right on them. So what I'm gonna do is kind of, just kind of slide the knob of my instrument right into that QL. And I'm just gonna use my, my bottom hand to kind of just swivel that instrument right there. So I'm able to put direct pressure on it and just kind of swivel the instrument so that I'm kind of really getting into that QL. And then this is where that kind of fan stroke really kind of shines in here too, where this 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 end of the instrument's not really moving all that much, but I'm able to kind of uh, mobilize and kind of create some blood flow around this lower back, this paraspinal, the QL, and all of these other uh, erectors that are kind of attaching into his pelvis. Oh boy. How's that feel, all right, buddy? Yeah, it feels Doing great. Okay? It's a little bit deep. Yeah. Nice, okay. Good, just breathe into it. Awesome. All right, nice job, buddy. Okay, so we're gonna go back down to laying face down. Take this bolster out. Okay, guys, so we just finished doing some active release and some Graston work over that, that left QL and paraspinal. So kind of staying consistent with that lateral sling that we're talking about. He's also got a lot of, you know, he's getting some like glute med discomfort and glute med tightness on this, on this opposite side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring his knee into flexion and use that lower leg as a lever to kind of externally rotate his hip as I kind of load that glute med and some of this other upper glute area. Obviously, again, hitting the glute max, hitting the glute med. You can kind of hear him kind of moaning because it hurts so good, you know? Hurts so good, Matt? Oh, yeah, feels good. All right, so again, that, you know, we're going as deep as you can isn't always the best thing, but you kind of want to get into that hurts so good parasympathetic nervous system where, and again, if he's feeling a little bit of discomfort on these areas and these triggers that I'm working on, it's because he needs it. You know, this, these are the muscles that need to be released. And what we're gonna do is follow this up with some corrective exercise. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot more kind of like the anti-rotation presses with a raise to kind of load that QL, you know, doing a lot more unilateral carries, okay? So that he's gotta stabilize his ribs and his pelvis. Um, and that's really been effective for him. And now we're starting to really work on more of those rotational patterns like chops and lifts and med ball work to kind of mimic or, or kind of train that rotary pattern so that when he's playing golf, he's able to decelerate his swing and not kind of crank on some of these end ranges so much. Nice, okay, so now that I work to an external rotation, I'm gonna take the, time, the steps too to kind of work on some of these deep hip uh, rotators, these deep hip external rotators here by ranging them into internal rotation. Okay, Ooh. so this is where I kind of like to use my elbow, right? You'll feel that shelf of the greater trochanter right in the side of his hip. So I'm gonna go right behind that or really from this position, it's really on top and kind of range him through here. Nice. Beautiful. You okay there, buddy? Yeah. Sweet. Right there, that's a nice spot right there. P go go Q. <laughs> yep, exactly. You got it. Matt's also another athletic trainer, so he's the the cool part about working with another healthcare provider as a, as a client is that he's really knowledgeable. So he's been able to really we've been able to collaborate, you know, really effectively on his corrective exercise programming and and really get specific for him because he's very good at giving me feedback. And for for us in this whole process, it's really been more of a conversation. And I would urge you, any healthcare providers out there have a conversation with your clients, okay? They're more intuitive than you give them credit for in a lot of cases. And, you know, it doesn't matter if what they're feeling or what their pain or what they think is attributing to their pain. It might not be accurate anatomically or physiologically speaking, but it's still relevant to their case, okay? So this is a case where he's also very knowledgeable about anatomy and physiology. So he's really accurate in what he's describing to me. So it's been really cool um, to kind of help him along this process. And again, I don't want to understate, he had spinal fusion, okay? That's a big freaking deal, okay? That's not a small, like quick little uh, arthroscopic surgery. That's open surgery, hardware involved. So this is, this is a very difficult thing to overcome. And even in the last 14 months, to get him back on the golf course is a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. And a lot of the credit goes to this guy right here because he's really put the work in, in his correctives and being diligent with them, okay? 
So we're just gonna finish up doing a little bit of this glute release and then we're gonna finish his treatment off today by just kind of doing a little bit of Graston work right over his SI joints and kind of at those insertions of his QL with the smaller instrument. All right, so we're gonna kind of get in here, same idea. He's in that prone position again. Get this open for you. We're gonna use this beveled, smaller beveled instrument. And I'm just gonna kind of get in here and create some blood flow right over that SI joint, okay? So he's a little gritty in here, so we just wanna bring some blood flow, some oxygen and nutrients to the table, and that'll really help him in, in these connective tissues to recover, okay? Also keep in mind that your, your sacrotuberous ligament that kind of is almost like an X pattern over your sacrum, kind of ties this, this left lumbar paraspinal group into this hamstring on his right side. Right, so that's that functional line that we're talking about. So what I really like to do is kind of strum right over that sacrotuberous ligament, okay? And just bring some blood flow to the table, desensitize it a little bit. I'm not pushing super hard, but you can see he's definitely getting a little bit red around here. That's okay, that's the blood flow doing its thing. But just strumming over this ligament can desensitize it and also produce, stimulate that fibroblastic production. Okay, it stimulates collagen production and it helps line those collagen fibers up all in the same direction, okay? So this is gonna give him a little bit of tensile strength and a little bit more elasticity through these areas. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda hit this other side too. All right, nice. How you feeling, man, all right? Yeah, it's less crunchy awesome. on this side. It is much less crunchy on this side, but definitely that left side, you know, that's kind of, I think, really this sling. And it makes sense, he's a right-handed golfer, okay? So he's gonna rotate in one direction. So that's another thing in his training programs that we've been working on, is having him throw the med ball in the opposite direction and work on his decelerators, okay? So making sure that we're giving him a little bit of symmetry in his programming because he plays an asymmetrical sport. Okay, so again, our job is to bring him closer to the middle of that spectrum and his training should serve as, a, as almost like a balancing act for his sport, okay? So it doesn't matter what sport you're talking about, whether it's golf, tennis, baseball, volleyball, any rotational sport where you're gonna do one side more than the other, it's really important in your off-season training and your corrective exercises that you're slightly mitigating that on some level. Nice. All right. All right, Matt, sit on up for me. Okay, just kind of get on your feet, move around, see how you feel. Oh, yeah, it's a lot looser. A little bit yeah, better? It's that, you know, like that side flexion. Right, really yeah, a lot of stuff over here. For no, sure. Definitely, yeah. Feeling a little, little bit better? Yeah. Cool, yeah. awesome. All right, guys, so I really want to thank you guys again for sitting in on the Recovery Lab for this next episode of uh, the Session Sit-In. If you're not already subscribed, if you like what you see, please subscribe and show some love. We really appreciate the support. You can follow me at, uh, at Mike Stella underscore ATC, or you can follow uh, Athletic Movement Protocol at, at underscore, uh, I mean, amp underscore uh, athlete, um, as well as check out our website, athleticmovementprotocol.com. I think that's it for today. I just want to say thanks to Matt for letting us do this video today. And we will see you guys next time on a session sit-in.